Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Roden, and today we are going to be going over 10 of the best second cars that you can buy for dirt cheap. Most of these are under 10K. The reason why they're under 10K and not 5K like I normally do is because they're second cars, not first cars. So second cars, you know, you should be able to save a little bit of money with your first car, get a job, save up a decent amount of money to buy your second car, and then, you know, have a, have a little project car on the side that you can build up and have fun with. So these are cars that are good second car it's a car that's literally just good if you already have something that can get you from point a to point b on time and back and you don't have to worry about it uh, really quick guys there is going to be a slight like humming noise in the back of this whole video the heater's on we're actually going through like an arctic cold front right now in connecticut it's going to be ridiculously cold so our heater like won't turn off now i've been sitting here for an hour trying to wait for it to turn off so i can start recording so i am sorry if you hear that in the background but there's nothing i can do and i just have to get the video out it might end who knows if it stops during the middle of this video that'd be amazing but as of right now it's not looking like it's going to so without further ado though let's get right into the video with number 10. all right so coming in at the number 10 spot is going to the hyundai genesis coupe we talk about this car a lot on this channel and i always tell you guys that this is a decent option for a uh, first car and i still agree with that it really is still a decent option with the first car but they've actually kind of gone up in price i told you guys a couple like probably last year i kept telling you guys you know if you want a genesis coupe buy it now because they're probably as cheap as they're going to get and i think i was right because these gen coupes dude they're getting really pricey now they come with a 3.8 liter v6 making 348 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive the only issue that you might have as a first time driver buying one of these would be the power it is a very powerful car like a lot of people make fun of genesis coupe for not being that quick but it actually is very quick and you're probably going to get a little bit too confident and crash it it also is a little bit of a money pit if it has higher mile so i'm not gonna lie it's it's, it's reliable it's not like the most unreliable car out there but if it has a lot of high miles the majority of people that own these Genesis Coupes do not take care of them, so it is going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a money pit. So just be careful of that. Coming in at the wonderful number nine spot is going to the Mazda Miata NB, specifically the NB. I use the NB here, but honestly, to any Miata works. A Miata is a good second car, not a good first car. Um, I was about to say something. Oh yeah, there's, it's just not like a top 10 list of cheap cars if you don't include a Miata. So I had to include one and I didn't want to go with the NA again. I always talk about the NA. So here's the NB. They come with a 1.8 liter inline four making 135 horsepower and they are rear wheel drive. Yes, rear wheel drive, which you might think may be a little bit of an issue, but that's actually not the reason why I put it as a good second car. The issue is not that they're hard to control because they're actually very easy to control. They have a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. The issue is that they're small. Over 50% of new drivers crash in the first year and you do not want to crash in a Mazda Miata because it's small and you could get hurt. On top of that, I'm six foot one and I've sat in a couple Miatas in my life and they're not the most comfortable for a person of my size. And I'm not like a, I'm really skinny actually. I'm six foot one, 150 pounds. So I'm a very skinny six foot one guy. And trust me, if you're around that size, you may not enjoy driving one of these. Coming in at the number eight spot is going to a car that honestly I freaking love with all my heart, but and it hurts me to say that it's not a good first car, but a good second car. But it is the Audi S4 B5. It is such a cool car, and I love it to the moon and back. But for a new driver, the one that you're going to be able to get is going to have high miles and be unreliable as hell, and you do not need that. They come with a 2.7 liter twin turbocharged V6, making 250 horsepower, and they are all wheel drive. That actually is like a very decent horsepower number for a new driver, and it's all wheel drive, which is great. So it, it it can be a first car if you get one that's clean enough and in good enough condition but let's face it if it's a first car you're probably gonna buy a cheap one and it's probably not gonna be in good condition and you're gonna spend a lot of money don't buy this car as your first car if you enjoy saving your money because if you don't it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna eat up your wallet coming in at the number seven spot is a car that people will argue to the grave and back is an amazing car and I do agree with them it is the Ford Mustang GT Fox body it's once again it's kind of a good combo of all the last like three cars that we went over it's genesis coupe miata and s4 b5 all of them have a little bit like the reason why all those cars are bad are the very first car at least is kind of the reason why the mustang is bad yeah, it comes with a five liter v8 making 225 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive it's not reliable not the most reliable out there but it's not hor it's not as as unreliable as the s4 b5 uh it's not that safe though it's definitely not as unsafe as the miata and it is a little bit too tail happy for a new driver. It's got a decent amount of horsepower and it's rear wheel drive. It does like to get a little bit sideways sometimes. However, they can be such a fun little track monster on the weekends. It's just not like a daily driver material. It's a Fox body Mustangs have since the dawn of time been perfect for project cars for second Sunday cruisers and they should need to stay that way. 
Coming in at number six is actually going to the Nissan 350Z. Listen, I have a 350Z and I, I'll tell you right now, if I had this car when I was 16 years old, I would have gotten into serious trouble. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be 100% honest, I would have gotten myself, other people, a whole plethora of human beings hurt with this car if I had it at 16 years old. They come with a 3.5 liter V6 making 306 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. The 350Z, the reason why it's I put it as like a good second car, has one of the highest crash rates in the world. And the reason why that is, isn't because it's super hard to control, it's actually a very decently easy car to control. It has a decent amount of horsepower, it's rear wheel drive, it can slide out on you, but you just need to learn how to drive a car. But the reason why it has such a high crash rate is because they're so cheap. 350Zs are ridiculously cheap, and I just hate me if you want, but this is the cold hard truth here. It's an amazing deal for a sports car under 5K. It's one of the best out there. 300 horsepower, rear wheel drive, good looks, two seats, reliable engine for under 5K. So what happens is a bunch of 16 year olds buy them, they don't know how to drive them, and they crash them. I don't want you to become one of those, so wait until you got some experience under your belt. Coming in, however, at the number five spot is going to the Porsche 944. The 944 Army is going to come out in full swing. Every time I mention the 944, there's always like 15 dudes to talk about it. And I love it too, guys, okay? But you guys don't need to tell me like every single fact that's ever been facted about the 944, okay? We don't need to know all that information. Either way, though, it comes with a three liter flat six making 211 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. Just up in like the Miata, they are very planted, so there's no worries there. It's a Porsche. It was not going to really spin out on you that much, but they are sadly unreliable as hell. It's a flat six motor. Any flat motor, any horizontally opposed motor is going to be relatively unreliable. That's Subaru's issue. And if you have time to drive it on the weekends or on a track, it's going to be amazing. It's going to really shine and you're going to absolutely love the car and you're not going to put a lot of stress on that motor. But if you're driving it to McDonald's and back every shit for every one of your shifts, and then you go to do your SATs in this freaking thing, it's not going to be as enjoyable. Coming in at the number four spot is going to the Nissan 240SX S13. This is obviously the ultimate drift mobile that every freaking TikTok teenager that is emo for some reason wants nowadays. Every single freaking one of them. S13, S13, best car ever. It's a good car, obviously. I love the S13, but guys, there are more than just the S13 out there for good like JDM cars. Uh, they come with a 2.4 liter inline four making 155 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. Once again, the issue is actually not the power. It's not gonna spin out on you. You're not gonna have trouble driving an S13 or anything like that. It is sadly that people neglect them like crazy. And as a first car, it's going to be cheap, just like the S4B5, it's going to be a cheap one. You're gonna think that you got a good deal when in reality, you're picking up somebody else's project. It is going, you're gonna spend countless hours trying to fix your S13, trying to get it to run correctly, just like so, just so you can't drive it the next day, then you got to take the bus again. And it's, it's a cool car, yes, but it's only a cool car if you get to drive it. Coming in at the third position for this list is going to the Pontiac GTO. This is actually one of the cars that are really expensive on, on this list for sure. This is probably the most expensive one on the list. It's pretty hard to find a GTO under 10K. It can be done, but it's pretty hard. I just want to make that very clear. Uh, and yes, it is pretty much a, not the best decision for a first car, okay? Uh, it comes with a six liter V8 making 400 horsepower and it's rear wheel drive. If you live somewhere where snow is an issue and you're thinking about buying a Pontiac GTO as your first car, you're a nut job. If you want this as a second car, absolutely. It comes with a freaking LS that makes 400 horsepower stock and it's rear wheel drive muscle car that's cheaper than like any of the competition out there. Yeah, it's an amazing second car. A Sunday Cruiser, amazing Sunday Cruiser. It's gonna be a blast to own as a second car, but as a first car, with no experience under your belt, you're just asking to die. And I, I know that sounds a little harsh, but it is the truth, man, so be careful. Coming in at the second position, the silver medal, if you ain't first year with last Ricky Bobby, it's going to the Toyota MR2 SW20. By the way, yes, that heater is still going on in the background. I really don't think it's going to end anytime soon. I'm sorry again about that, guys. I really feel bad. But this car, though, the MR2, gets such a bad rep, and it really doesn't deserve all the hate that it gets, but it definitely, you know, you definitely should be paying attention to what people are saying about this car. They come with a 2.2 liter inline four, making 130 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive. It it has something called snap oversteer because the car is rear engine, actually mid engine, it's mid engine, but the car is mid engine, so the engine's just behind you. And so there's something called snap oversteer, which is easy to prevent it if you know how to prevent it, but for a new driver who doesn't even know how to prevent normal oversteer yet, it's not gonna be the easiest. Pretty much though, if you wanted to know what it is, is when you go into a corner, if you press the brakes, 
since most of the brake bias is in the front wheels of cars, the front wheels lock up faster than the rear wheels do. And since all the weight is in the rear though of the MR2, the rear will swing out. That's the issue. And it's really easy to, you know, counteract it. You just brake before you go into the corner and then you glide through the corner. But most people aren't gonna know that as a new driver, so be safe. The honorable mention for today. That's right, there's 11 of them. I keep getting you guys with that. I know I know I am. I know I'm I know I'm fooling you with that. It is any street bike ever. Hear me out, buddy. Uh, hear me out, okay? Uh, they usually come with anywhere between like 600cc to 1000cc, and they all make around 100 horsepower to 200 horsepower, on average at least. And obviously, this is not a good idea for somebody looking to get to work and back on time, especially if you live somewhere where winter is an, is an issue. But I don't think people truly understand that even if they live somewhere in like California where you, could, where you can drive it year round, buying a motorcycle is a horrible option for a first vehicle. If you want a motorcycle, that's great. They are fun vehicles. Take time to think about it, learn how to ride a dirt bike or something at least, and then get on one. Coming in at first place is a car that I love so much and I feel so bad for it. It is the Mazda RX-7 FC. Uh, yes, it is extremely unreliable and it's very hard to take care of. And that's the reason that I obviously don't think this is a good first car. Um, you don't want to be driving a, 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 an unreliable that's trapped from to school and back on time every day. Uh, but they come with a 1.2 liter two rotor rotary engine making 160 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. If you don't have to worry about driving th this car every day, then the FC RX-7 is a great project car and it hurts me that people like think that since it's not a good car to like daily drive because it's a horrible car to daily drive I'll be honest it's, a, it's not a good car to daily drive but since people know that it's not a good car to daily drive they also just say that it's not a good car and that's not the case it's it's an amazing car it's an amazing second car if you want a project car a Sunday cruiser a drift car or anything like that a car for a swap these are good at engine swaps then an FC RX-7 is an amazing option for really cheap but yeah, for the first car, probably not the best idea, so. But ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. This weekend, I think I'm finally actually going to be doing an install on the Integra. So I finally have the actual first part of the build live sometime next week, and I'm so excited. The only issue though is all my friends are ready, but of course, now that my friends are ready, Connecticut is gonna be like negative 20 degrees on Saturday so in their shop doesn't have heat so I don't know if um I don't know how that's gonna go so hopefully fingers crossed that we can find a way or it's not too cold to work on the car um because I really want to get those freaking videos out for you I have all the parts now just sitting there waiting I'm just waiting for my friends to like have time to be able to help me out with it and stuff like that but either way though thank you guys so much for watching in the top of the description is obviously going to be a link to my second gaming channel called giggity where i go over grand theft auto online content i really am having a fun time over there making gta online content and i would love it if you guys could enjoy that time with me so go over there and check it out if you haven't already and if you're interested in that at all but anyway thank you guys so much for watching das have a nice night